Well, good evening, everyone. It's, uh, it's great to be back uh, as MC tonight, actually as co-MC, but more on that in, in a few minutes. And I always, always look forward to this event because we have such a great turnout, but also because we pause once a year to really recognize those who have made a real dis difference in the advancement of women in our society. And I think it's so important to hear their stories. I always leave inspired. I know you leave inspired by these stories and their accomplishments. Always learn a little bit, maybe some best practice sharing. It's been a wonderful day. So it's a really important event and I'm really honored to be uh, one of the co-chairs. But the journey of these exceptional leaders does not mean we've reached our final destination. And that's another one of the reasons why today's event and tonight's so important to recognize that we haven't reached our objective. There remain obstacles, barriers on the path towards a truly diverse and inclusive workforce. And that's why we're working so hard and that's why we talk about these things today. And if we're frank with ourselves, they have nothing to do with things like wanting to take more time away to have children or raise a family. The reality is gender stereotypes are one of the biggest roadblocks. They are prevalent in organizations and institutions and Catalyst has done some excellent research on this. What did they find? They found that women spend far more time than men at work providing, proving, sorry, they are competent workers or compensating for stereotypical perceptions of them. But gender stereotypes permeate even deeper than that. And I was troubled by a recent survey that was put in front of me from Plan International that polled young Canadians aged 14 to 22. And what did it say? It said only 10% of them could see a woman as a CEO. And almost 60% of male respondents said a good leader must be strong. But less than a third of them described girls and women as strong. Now clearly they have not seen my mother and I think a couple of years ago you heard me talk about my mother was a huge inspiration to me, particularly as my father passed away when I was really young. But unless we change these perceptions of what, what a leader is and isn't, I don't think we're gonna make meaningful progress in our society. So at RBC a, a number of years ago, we set out to change our definition of what leadership is and what we think of leaders and what we ask from leaders. For instance, we think of leaders as people who can set bold goals and stretch themselves and their teams to reach new destinations. People who inspire and mobilize a team and achieve that vision. When people at any level in the organization make an impact, adapt quickly, learn continuously, take risks, and unlock the potential of others, and always speak up for the good of those we serve. It's been the hallmark of our core organizational leadership model. And none of these traits or capabilities are inherently male. They're human. And that's what we should emphasize as we teach our children, mentor and colleagues, lead our teams. The future of our organizations depend on us. As I said earlier, we should feel proud and inspired by those we celebrate tonight. I also look forward to, to handing out those awards tonight. But let's also leave this gathering wanting more, more paths for women to grow and develop professionally, more sponsorship and opportunities for women to gain influence in their organization and to run PL, and more women in management in general. And more encouraging, what I always said to myself when I was a young student joining the bank, and I pass this on to all young leaders in our organization, why not me? I'm so proud to work for an organization where a woman executive population is well above external benchmarks. Women represented over 45% of all executive appointments. And that includes our chair of the board, Katie Taylor, who's with us tonight, who is a real trailblazer. But as someone who cares deeply about our country, its business community, and the future prospects, we all recognize that more diverse and inclusive society leads to better insights, better ideas, better decisions. In this age of secular change, that's how organizations need to compete, create value, and drive new innovation. We cannot advance our collective interests without advancing the interests of women. And that's why we must all remain catalysts, action-oriented, and forward-looking. And as the plan survey underscored, it starts 
of investing and championing our young people, helping them better understand what it means to be a leader and unlocking their potential sooner. So to do just that, I'm very pleased to share the stage tonight with a talented and passionate human rights activist, student, and future leader, Isa Ab. <laughs> All right, Isa. Now, Isa, who you're gonna meet in a second, embodies everything you'd hope to see recognized on this stage in the future. And I had the real privilege, privilege to meet Isa and to share the CEO experience with her recently as part of the Plan International's Canada's Girls Belong Here program. And in our time together, I have to tell you, Isa, when we first met in that first kind of five minutes in the office, she eyed the chair by the desk and she just sat down in that chair and uh, she looked right at home. And she looked confident in that chair. And I'm saying, wow, that's impressive. And I didn't, I forgot to tell her about the buttons she wasn't supposed to touch at the <laughs> side of the desk because they're not for coffee. <laughs> but I saw an Isa, and as I talked to her about her background and what she's done, she has this incredible passion that's led her to create a nonprofit called Isa's Teddy Bear Foundation that helps children and women in need across the world. And emerging leaders like Isa possess skills that are critical for all of us, every organization in their room. Isa, we, I'm, I really enjoyed the time that we spent and the day we spent together talking. I said, wow, wouldn't it be great if you came in and joined us at dinner tonight? Then we said, wouldn't it be great if you came up on stage? And I said, wouldn't it be great if we just co-hosted the whole thing? <laughs> Please welcome Isa, be co-chair of our meeting tonight and co-CEO for the day. 